a quick tip about smoothing in Z ZBrush. So when I hover over my geometry and press the shift key, when I now click and drag, you smooth out. And that is something that you already know. But you might not know that when you start smoothing, so shift, click, and now drag away from the mesh and I'm still holding or pressing my uh, my uh, pin on the tablet and I move over to another portion of the mesh that I I'm still smoothing so you see the bottom is being smooth of course of course if I go closer then my brush will become bigger over that part so let me undo shift smooth drag away from the mesh go to another part And you could, of course, do multiple smooth operations if you want to. It's not a big deal. But sometimes it comes in handy that when you drag away from the mesh, that you are still in smooth mode. And when you go back to your mesh, all the, way, all the while pressing your pin on the tablet, that you are still smoothing. That sometimes comes in very handy. Another tip, and I'm going to subdivide this mesh and maybe make a bit of an extrusion with the move brush turn off my poly frame maybe each polish a bit sometimes the smooth brush does not what you want it to do uh, it can be annoying to smooth something out and to actually destroy your form what i do a lot is actually and i have already chosen it use the edge polish brush. Now I find the edge polish brush to be really good in smoothing out and I'm going to subdivide a bit more. Now with the smaller brush size, when I just click and drag, you're going to get hard transitions. That is what you normally are used to with the edge polish brush. But when you make fine circular movements with low pen pressure, with the edge polish brush, so fine circular movements, then I find that the edge polish brush is excellent for rounding off or smoothing off instead of using the smooth brush. And of course, I can still use the shift key for smoothing out with fine pressure to gently smooth out the surface without actually destroying your form. So the edge polish brush with a small brush size and light pressure and small circular movements is a great way of smoothing out. Without having to use the smooth brush which in some cases actually does more of a destructive modeling operation when your intensity is rather high. Another brush that you can use is the Trim Dynamic and I have customized Trim Dynamic a bit so I have a, a Trim Dynamic brush. When I go to my settings it has normally a low Z intensity. Normally I've upped it a bit so normally it's about 10 and with a focal shift of 10. So it's uh, a higher focal shift so normally when you use trim dynamic and where I have it so trim dynamic normally it has a higher Z intensity and a low focal shift the adaptation that I have made is a higher of uh, uh, much lower Z intensity and a much higher focal shift and that is also ideal to use a trim dynamic like that also with light pressure and circular movements if you will to smooth off parts without having to use the move uh, the smooth brush so smoothing when you start smoothing and click and my geometry or my subdivisions are much too high to see any difference now so start smoothing drag off and continue smoothing somewhere else if the need arises 
and with higher subdivision levels, you can use each polish with a small brush size, small circular movements, light pressure, or the trim dynamic. And of course, with Alt, you go the other way. So if now I'm pressing Alt, and because my Z intensity is rather low, you won't see much difference with the H polish brush. It will be more visible, so you can build up, and then with light pressure and circular movements, smooth out, and maybe with light pressure and the smooth brush to smooth something out a bit more. In a way, these are workflow tips that I use regularly. Hope it helps. Bye for now.